Nintendo announces a new patch is coming, including adjustments to fighter balance. You feel the butterfree starting to fly in your stomach as you back up your replays, and despite being let down countless times before, there's just that faint glimmer of hope that your main might get buffed. If this accurately describes you, there's a good chance that you made a bottom tier character. In a previous video, we talked about what factors make a top tier character good. And in this video, we're gonna talk about what makes a bottom or low tier character bad. Before we get started, don't forget to check out ProGuys.com for all your competitive resources. You can get access to experienced coaches via our Play With Pros platform and learn from top players like MKLeo and our various pro courses. So, what makes a bottom tier bad? As with top tiers, there are many factors that contribute to a character being less viable, but overall, a character is bad if they are either lacking something essential or if they have attributes that are very detrimental. Let's start with the lacking attributes. Probably the most simple reason for a character to be unviable competitively is that they are slow. There are many variables that factor into speed, and although being fast in every way isn't required for a good character, being slow in many ways almost always results in a poor character. The important speed values can be broken down into ground speed, air speed, and frame data. Having a poor ground speed means a character won't be able to chase down opponents who retreat, they won't be able to retreat as effectively themselves, and their approaches will be much more reactable. Having a poor airspeed carries the same detriments, but also limits a character's horizontal combo potential, makes them much easier to trap when they're landing, and weakens their recovery significantly. Airspeed is actually a huge factor in recovery. Characters like Simon and Richter don't have terrible range on their recovery moves, but their slow airspeed makes it so hard to get in range in the first place. Frame data might be the most important speed value in determining a character's viability. Frame data refers to the speed at which the character's attacks come out. With slow frame data, a character is much easier to react to, loses opportunities to whiff punish with fast attacks, and will struggle very much to escape disadvantage and avoid being rushed down. As mentioned earlier, a character can lack one of these speed values and still be good if they compensate appropriately. For example, Wolf is very slow on the ground, but has amazing air speed and solid frame data while Fox is very slow in the air, but also has great frame data as well as fast ground speed. So if a character has fast ground speed, air speed, and frame data, they must be a great character, right? No! Well, you'd be wrong. Although Sheik is no low tier, she falls quite short of top tier despite being fast in every way possible. This is due to her low damage output and lacking KO power. It's very important for a character to be able to tack on damage quickly. Whether it be through combos or stray hits, so many characters in Ultimate can do this effectively. So any character that struggles to deal damage is very likely to find themselves at kill percent before their opponent. Dealing less damage also means you'll be less likely to hit your opponent off stage, giving you fewer opportunities to edge guard. KO power is also very important, although it's perhaps the most common thing for a bad character to actually be good at. Like with dealing damage, the more time you take to KO your opponent, the more time they're gonna have to KO you. This becomes even more significant if your character is very light in weight. Characters like Jigglypuff and Kirby will lose stocks very early and don't have the strengths to compensate like Pichu does. Racking up damage and taking stocks is often achieved through combos, and this is another thing that many weaker characters tend to lack. Lower tier characters often either have very few combos altogether, combos that are very specific and situational, or combos that don't achieve very much. Out of their combo, a character with poor movement and frame data will struggle to extend their advantage state through juggling and landing traps. And another aspect that bad characters often lack is edge guarding, especially if a character doesn't deal damage or take stocks early. Edge guarding can be the most reliable way to take the lead in the game of Smash. Due to inconsistent hitboxes, ineffective knockback angles, and poor recovery, a character can struggle to edge guard, and these factors will actually apply to much more. Some attacks in Smash just don't do their job every time. Multi-hit attacks can be in 
inconsistent with characters falling out before the important hit. The hitbox can be absent from a part of a character's body that looks like it should hit, or the hitbox might end early and have a useless weak or reverse hit. This can make a character feel almost luck dependent sometimes, and can get in the way of crucial plays even when the player made the objectively right choice. Knockback angles matter more offstage than on, but generally you want fairly straight horizontal and vertical knockbacks to send your opponent closer to the blast zone and lower offstage. For example, if your attack sends the opponent diagonally up and away, they can simply drift back to the stage and save all of their resources for dealing with your edge guard. A lower angle would put them in a dangerous position where they need to recover to ledge. Poor recovery is easily one of the most influential factors in reducing a character's viability. Most notably, Little Mac is generally thought to be the very worst character in the game almost purely due to his abysmal recovery. Especially with the heavy commitment of air dodging and smash ultimate, characters are very susceptible to offstage edge guards, and without a solid recovery mix-up or amazing travel distance, they'll have little to fend for themselves with. Little Mac's air acceleration is very slow, and his recovery specials travel very little distance and are fairly obvious, meaning he can very easily lose a stock for getting hit once off stage at any percent. Although Mac is the extreme example, many bottom and low tier characters struggle with this. Even Kirby, with his multiple jumps and far traveling up B, can struggle to avoid edge guards because he's slow in the air and has to recover vertically with his up B, which doesn't defend him from above or behind. Characters like King K. Rool are also very weak off stage. K. Rool's recovery actually has a very reliable hitbox above him, but he's very slow in the air, vulnerable from the sides, and also has a giant hurt box. Hurtbox size is a huge detrimental factor that holds back many characters. Even on a higher tier character like Bowser, having a large hurtbox just makes it easier to get hit. Taking up so much space is particularly detrimental and disadvantage, making it a grueling task for those beefy boy characters to land, escape combos, and return to the stage. Generally, a character's width makes them easier to juggle from below or spike from above and a character's height makes them more vulnerable to horizontal edge guards. Taller characters also can be hit by many rising aerials that shorter characters can avoid by just sitting there and doing absolutely nothing. Some characters have more specific detrimental factors. Ice climbers have many incredible strengths, but they can struggle immensely when separated and especially when Nana has been KO'd. Also relying on the inconsistent and sometimes downright nonsensical AI controlling Nana is significant as well. Lucario isn't a particularly bad character, but he also has a notable detriment in his early percent gameplay. Without the aura buffs Lucario gains when he's at a high percent, he deals little damage and knockback and has less range. Because of this, Lucario can struggle against characters who take stocks at lower percent not giving him a chance to build up much aura. Although his atrocious recovery is Little Mac's biggest weakness, he's also hugely detrimented by his aerials. Little Mac is a stellar example of how good traits can be compensated for with bad traits, as this was literally the intention of his character design, although they took it a bit too far with the bad traits if you ask me. Little Mac has the third fastest run speed, fast frame data on his jab and tilt, and super armor on his smash attacks which certainly pack a punch. This is compensated by his aerial kit, which consists of easily the worst aerials in the game. They're borderline useless in almost every situation, and of course by his recovery, which makes Mac wish competitive rule sets legalized walk-offs. On the contrary, Jigglypuff is a character designed to spend most of its time in the air. Puff has amazing aerial mobility and multiple double jumps, but a very lackluster set of ground moves. This requires Puff to play mostly airborne, but lacking much range and disjoints, it can be easily walled out by sword characters. Another more niche factor that can to make a character less viable is their matchup spreads. Some characters are essentially invalidated by certain matchups, meaning that they can be counterpicked by a player who doesn't even main that character and struggle. This requires any player of these characters to have a secondary for their bad matchups if they want to get results at big tournaments and their character is thus not solo mainable. What do you think makes a character less viable in competitive Smash? Let us know in the comments below and make sure to subscribe to Pro Guides. Turn on notifications and we'll catch you in another video.